welcome everybody this evening. I <coughs> don't think we have any public comment period. Okay, so moving right along, we'll head to the consent agenda, which includes the minutes from the previous meeting, appropriations, and the Lake Cabin transfers for H14, G8, and F7. Do I hear a motion or any conversation? So move. Okay. For the consent agenda. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Uh, next, we'll go to Old Business Highway 177 Highway Resurfacing Update. Nick? So, last two weeks ago, um, we had the pre common meeting for get the schedule and go over the plans and everything like that. Um, it's supposed to start on September 8th, so next Tuesday. They're supposed to start. Um, and then they plan on being done with all of it by October 19th. So that'll include um, the crosswalks downtown and that first block there, milling, the paving, crack sealing, uh, striping removal, chip seal, and then restriping. So, get right on it. And then I don't have any update on the North River Walk extension, that guy's getting charged today, $750 a day for every day, it doesn't start. So he's 21 days into a 55 day working period. So he's getting charged $750 a day for every day, it doesn't start. Remind us again which company that is? Uh, BF Beechner, I think it is. Okay. And what I kind of about them is it's, it's a, a wife. An ex-husband and a child, one of the kids that and there's three different firms that all have different abbreviations of that name. Mm, okay. So and maybe one we probably need to stay away from in the future. I guess it's kind of common for all three of them to start really late. And, and what Brady would be told us. So. Mm -hmm. so anyways. Okay. Um, does do is there anything that our crews since we had talked about. Since we're chipping the ceiling, Our crews don't have anything to do. they don't have to go over it later and sweep it or roll they, it. Or they anything. do all that. They'll sweep it up and then haul the chips probably to the river walk. I think Jeff lost her once more. They're all okay. going. They'll clean those up and take them over to the river walk. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, this all they okay. show up to do all the work and the city doesn't have too much involvement in it. Hopefully, we won't have an early snow this year and they'll get this all done. Yeah. <laughs> It's happened before. <laughs> okay. Are they still planning to do the work over there? This over company? Here? Yeah. That the plan, yeah. I mean, it's a 2020 project. That's where the funding is from the state. So they'll get in trouble with the state to get an agreement. Are they going to work with? I mean, I can't see them. That's over sixteen thousand dollars. For what? Oh the, yeah. Well, I the mean, fees. we wrote a ninety-six thousand dollar check to the state already for our, our matching part of that. So, I mean... I assume the state, the, the state made sure they were bonded and everything. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. so they'll, they'll, the, state, it's the state's deal now. The state's the one charging them and is responsible for getting them to live up to their agreement. So, um, Brady says usually what happens is they come in right before their 55-day working period's up and start work. That's what usually happens with this group. <laughs> that wasn't something we were told before when we were bidding, accepting bids from these people, so... Something that we found at the pre con meeting afterwards that that's pretty normal for that group of people to do that. So, hmm. I'll have to write that one down. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> well, I just hope they don't come in and just half heartedly do the job. Well, there's a in. well, we have an engineer on site from BG that has to, that specs everything to make sure the specs match what the drawings are and what everything the engineer drew. Um, it's the same thing with the chip and seal, they'll, they'll do measurements on stuff, we'll test the concrete to make sure it's the right hardness and things like that. So, okay. Um, Good. Okay. Okay, uh, let's move on down to new business and Cindy is here to do the audit. Cindy Jensen. Hey, how are you guys? I think Nick threw them upstairs somewhere. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Luke's in here, up with you guys in the same quarter. Got a couple letters that those of you that have been on the council will recognize. Uh, the first one is just a two-page one. Um, this audit is just an audit of your financial statements, not uh, everything set up in your financial control structure. But 
as part of going through the audit, we notice different things. Uh, most of these are going to just be more repetitive in nature. Um, the first one is you don't have proper separation of duties. Um, the office personnel, you don't have a lot of office personnel, um, but a lot of them are performing the task on the say, like payroll or paying the bill or doing these all or whatever the case may be. Um, that's pretty common in small cities. If you have the ability, I would recommend rotating duties trying to, to, to get some controls that way. And then also, um, absent of that, it becomes incumbent upon you all, the mayor, Nick, everybody else, to look at the details, you know, pay attention. Uh, the second one um, is a repeat from last year, and I believe it may be fixed or close so. Um, the bank reconciliations were not being done timely. Um, if we weren't getting it done into the general ledger, so they could make the reconciliation which led to this process being months and months and months behind. I do believe maybe some progress has been made on that in the current year. Um, it, it just clearly needs to be done in time. Um, it's hard to find a mistake in the month following it, let alone six months following it. Um, the last one talks about the accounting a little bit. Um, you follow the state of Kansas regulatory basis of accounting, which is a budget basis, which is Receipts are receipts when you get them. Doesn't matter if somebody owes you money, unless they pay you, it's not a, it's not a receipt. Expenses are expenses when you incur them. So if you sign that contract or order that product, it's an expense then. So it's super conservative. Um, there, there seems to be still some confusion on how all this works, and I would probably recommending or recommend continuing some training on that. There's quite a bit of Entries, one of the things that I did notice is that you have a very large chart account. When somebody has to sit there and code from 50 bazillion charts of uh, options, it's going to be your at home six. So I would encourage you, if you could consolidate, to, to use that. Um, I know that a lot of the times you, you want to have that detail. Lots of times with computers, you can run a report that shows that vendor or, or whatever. But, there's a whole bunch of them that have almost no activity in them, but just enough to make the target accounts 8,000 pages. Um, the rest of it, I think, I talked about the um, training, understanding the general ledger. General ledger journal entries should not be made. Uh, if they're made, they need to have a reason. What's better this year? And, and they need to have approval you know if, if the nature gets made backwards somebody needs to look at it and say yeah make it backwards um just just some work there i think will make everything better and part of that you will see when we get to the audit one of the statutory violations was we were over budget several times i believe that's because the bank wasn't reconciled but it wasn't in there properly and i mean before you pay bills you need to have two things. You need to have the money, and you need to have the money in that fund, and you need to have the statutory authority to spend it, which is what's the higher budget. Um, you can get the statutory authority to spend it easily by amending your budget, but you've got to have those reports up to date and timely to make those, those decisions. The second um, letter I have is one that we're required to give you by our standards. It talks about the other process, and for the most part of this, we'll let you look at it over at your leisure. Um, <clears throat> talks about disagreements. I didn't have disagreements, but I did still have difficulties in getting, getting, working my way through the general ledger. Um, if the general journal entries weren't made, and it came to a receipt module, it just makes it easier to follow. If it gets adjusted, it just makes more steps to try to follow. So I do believe you make progress on this. Um, and then attached to that letter are the rule entries and adjustments. The uncorrected adjustments are mostly what I would call timing errors, meaning maybe it's a pay because you cut December 31st, you're naturally going to have some expenses that fall below or before that that aren't paid until the next year. There's a few errors on both sides of the year on that. 
And then the cash balance, um, which goes back to the reconciliation, you'll treasure I mean, uh, 42 entries that need to be made into the general ledger. I think it kind of all got plugged in there in, the, in between, and that's what that 5,000 is. The rest of these are the general entries that were made. Most of those um, are tiny. There's a few of them again, I would recommend the accounting, like your 10% life transfer. That's part of your lease, it's been there forever. The transfer wasn't made, so we talked about making the transfer. I, I think understanding your funds would be a good thing. You know, know what that fund is for. Every fund has a purpose. Um, if you put that money in there, you probably have a statutory reason that you have to spend it for a, person, a specific purpose or a donor gave it to you. Say so for river walk, you have to use it for the river walk. Just become more familiar, I think, with those would be helpful. All right, so then number four. I know I'm going to this fast, so. Got questions for everybody? All right, so on page one of your report, this is actually what we refer to as a modified report. Um, it's modified because the way you're doing the city lake taxes for the cabins, is, or for the land, I'm sorry, it's really your tax, but the leaseholders are obligated to pay it with the lease. Um, in the past, the cabin owners paid it here, and then you sent it to the county. Now, for ease of things, it's going directly to the county. But theoretically, that's probably still your revenue and your expense. So I'm saying these are right, except for the fact that you're doing that. I, I'm not saying that I think you should do it differently, because it's certainly an easier methodology. But I think in, in full, full uh, fairness, it is probably not exactly right, because it is a receipt and then an expenditure. Um, page three is a snapshot of your funds. Um, as you can see, most of them are holding their own. Um, your beginning cash balance started at 4.35 million and your ending was 4.5 so you did okay there and then But I go through a list and I have to go through and that the, there's certain things on the list that said you do it and you did it or you didn't. Um, the city treasurer is required to publish quarterly financial statements. Those weren't done because the reconciliation was done and they didn't want to do it part part way. Um, I think they're being done now. Yep, we put it being done in the last two. So I'm sure we go on. And then the second one I already addressed too is that you can't go over your budget. Several of the funds you actually did go over the budget, and I think that's because you need to have reports that say, I, you know, I, my budget's 400000 I can't go over that, so. All right, and those funds were? Sales, both sales tax, special rec, and solid waste. So obviously your trash company, you raise the rate, and you just shouldn't get the budget printed. It's not a big deal. No. It just should probably work Usually, Because usually we raise the CPI on the, the trash and I don't remember us doing that last year. They have to come to us right. for us to approve that before they can actually raise that rate. Right. And, um gosh I'm like my guy that took it over. I talked to him and then six, seven months ago he was supposed to work on the new contract and I haven't seen the contract from that. So he's taking over buying the company. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah. John? John. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't say that because I thought it was wrong. But. On page seven, I always like to point it out just to be clear that the city staff don't do anything wrong. Papers is underfunded, and they put out a big publication every year that says, you know, this is how much you're short, the school short, everybody else is short. Um, that amount for you guys is 707000 They're paying exactly what Papers says to pay. 
It's just that it's a it's a capers issue more so than an MU issue. Um, rest of this, I guess, part of this plan for Fourteen. That's the budgetary comparison, which we already um, pointed out that there's a few funds that actually went over the bound over their uh, budget. All the ways was very little. The other ones were a little bit bigger. Part of that, I think, you know, because it's hard for the sales tax fund to, to go over. Nick and I talked about. It. I think when Jay budgeted that, just budgeted the current year, and actually. You split the general fund, you split that sales tax out of the general fund where it had been into its own fund, and, and the rest of the money just didn't get budgeted in there. So I don't think um, it's a big deal. Just something probably more to watch. And then beyond, beyond that is more detail of the front page, just have like the general fund have more detail, you know, where the money's coming from, the county, you know, where the case is. There's no city sales tax in the general fund now because you put that into its own. Own particular fund. Um, and I don't know if there's any particular questions on any of these that jump out. There's no employee benefits in the general fund because you actually move that to its own fund as well. So a little bit this is kind of weird where you see the zero. But that's just because you did some adjustments actually at the end of 18 to try to get some more clarity and make it easy for everybody to understand what's, what's happening. Um, like on the employee benefits fund, we had talked a little bit, um, Megan and I talked a little bit, um, the, the water and sewer should cover themselves. They're, the fees that you charge should offset the, the expenses that they have. Um, they had guesstimated that at budget time, um, the benefits, and a transfer was made out of sewer and water to cover that and to employ benefits. But if you look at the act, and, and actually you can make that transfer anyway, but if you look at that transfer as far as correlating into the employee benefits, it was probably too big. We talked a little bit about maybe, you know, comparing what the real cost was to, to what you transfer, just because it makes sense. You want to, you know, you don't, uh, unless you're, you want that to come from levy funds, but typically those are more like a business fund where the, the, are covered by the charges that the system has. Um, other than that, I think we, we talked about several things throughout here, and I think maybe some changes. I think we talked about CIP, and, and again, kind of knowing your funds where CIP can only have transfers and or reimbursements, but I think. Because of your projects, we've got some of those reimbursements uh, maybe ironed out. So um, we'll see how it goes. But anyhow, that's actually all I have. So I want you guys look at it for a minute or two, or you can say a minute or two, or you can say a minute or two, or you can say I do have a question sitting next year. When we do, when we have a, a budget, our budget meetings, mm -hmm. just to make sure that we are doing these the way we should do and making sure that we're covering everything, would you be willing to sit in with us for a few minutes on that, like right at the first, or? You know, Jay just did the budgets, I think, a little bit differently. Okay. Um, you know, I always try, and he did too, to underestimate the revenues and overestimate the expenses. That way you don't have to redo it. And I, I think that and that theory works pretty well unless you overestimate the expenses and then okay the street department decides to spend it all your fire just I mean if, if because it's there. Start, yeah. yeah. And, and that's not typically been a problem for you guys. Mm -hmm. So you know you usually have a little bit extra in there to give you that breathing room. Okay. So I like to think it's not going to be a big problem going forward. Okay. It's just you know if we and maybe we should make kind of a list of that prior to budgeting and right. make sure we're, you know, watching it closer. Yeah, I mean, because if you, you know, if you go with a true budget where, you know, you have fire department, $5,000 to spend and, and no more. If you, if you go to that, then you will end up more where you're going to probably have to spend because 
you know, used more like a typical budget like we would use at our house, mm -hmm. as opposed to just giving you a little bit of breathing room and just using the first thing. Sure. Okay. Yes, I can help you. Yeah, just, you know, the highlights, you know, the... I'm not sure we've ever amended the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you usually have enough, um, what, Pull off for lack of a better accounting term than that. Yeah, we'll probably get to this year because we pay the budget of twenty thousand dollars for repair pool, uh, pool repairs. We spent more than that when we repaired the pool. So okay. we'll have to do one this year for that. And normally, well, maybe, it's been, if that's what we're thinking, I mean, it's, it's, it's only over by about eight hundred dollars. Yeah, but that means that you know, the general fund is general fund pool it's, it's at point seven. Yeah, it's still the total total. So if you yeah. go, I'm sure. even on every line item. And it's point seven, yeah. Well, we shouldn't be because we haven't operated the pool this year. So, well, you're also relying on revenue coming into the pool to offset oh, some. True. We didn't yeah. have any revenue this year. Right. Point seven though doesn't have any so. thing to do with the pool revenue. The pool revenue goes into the CPI pool. though. We it's budgeted. Right. Which one budgeted repairs out there is twenty thousand uh, CPI. I think we spent forty-eight or forty-nine thousand dollars. And you're paying that out of the sales tax fund? No, no. The this uh, PI fund is part of the point seven for the pool. When when we started that, and as we went along, that increased more and more, and there was more in there. So we started using part of it. And originally, when we started, that was part of the payment mm -hmm. uh, for that. We pulled money out for the uh, the zebra mussel. Mm -hmm. Prevention out at the city of lake, and then there was one other thing that we used it for. You know, so it's it's the sales tax has increased, and so now there's more money in there. Yeah. And the point seven or the one point? Not the one percent. It's, it's a seven. The point, point, seven, the point seven. seven typically was just your yeah. full payment, and but there was there was like a, I don't know, almost two hundred thousand dollars in there, or something like that. So yes. part of that, I'm wondering, they started all this from the notes I found. That part of that reason for that fund is to make sure we can maintain and make sure something doesn't happen to the pool. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, so that was part of the point seven when that was put in place for the repairs and things like what we did to the pool this, this past year or this spring. Like we were prepared to paint it. It needed to be painted. So, but anyway, it's only like eight hundred and eighty-eight dollars, I think, or something like that. So, but we have to do them for that. Hopefully, we're not too much pushing there to be okay. To, to yeah. be okay. But, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So Thank I guess you. Uh, just to, from my from my own thing here, yeah. we're doing better. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slow reaction to that. Okay. But you think we need more training? That's the I, that's I the, the, the I, number I one thing. And I, and I got that set up. We got the guy coming back in October. 16th through the 8th, 19th for three days through training, and then he is retiring from G Works, and then he's going to be like an independent contractor, and then we'll work with him as an independent contractor. Um, but bottom line, in my opinion, this is very fixable. That, that it's that you know we've made some progress. Right, it's been some progress. I'm not going to share it with you. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. We don't want you to. <laughs> <laughs> In my opinion, it, 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 for you guys to get good information, you need good information. You can't sit there and make a decision if you don't have good information. So it's just important for everybody to get that. Correct. Especially those reconciliations. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're we're good now on that. I think with Teresa doing it in house, it helps if she's able to ask Laura and make a question why she's why she's working on the treasury report. And I think that's been very beneficial to to us because. It's all in house, and we can keep track of it. But in lots of ways, it shouldn't have had I mean, the, the contradictory. But in lots of ways, it should have. It should have been in the general ledger to begin with. There well, well, I'm not. There shouldn't have been not, so many adjustments to it. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. What I'm saying is that we've gotten better, and we have two of our treasury report. I mean, there was never a treasury report since I've been here until this spring when Teresa took over as the treasurer. Mm -hmm. So. I feel very confident that, that Nick will make sure it gets correct. Well, we appreciate all your help. Yeah. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks, Thanks Cindy.
Okay. Um, moving on along, I don't believe we need to take any any action on that. So let's move on along and go to Economic Development Committee recommendation for 50-50 grants. We got two of them. First one's Alexander Artworks. Um, their funding request is uh, $2,725 and they're wanting to do exterior paint on in front of all three of the buildings, including Casa, um, shades, shades of the front of the building for increased energy efficiency. Um, so they're asking for $2,725 towards that project. And they have matching funds in the same amount. I have one question. Has the Historical Society been contacted with their project that you're wanting to do about changing the screens on the front of the building? Or? I don't think it's changing. I think it's just adding inside. Um, oh, on the inside. Yeah. 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 That, that is what I was wondering. It's yeah. fading the insides okay. and stuff, and yeah, and it's causing a lot of heat in there. Yep. I, I don't know if you've ever been in there that. to have coffee, but if you're in there toward fall, when we're coming here into fall, you can't even touch their counters. It's so hot in there. Okay. So, yeah. That was my curiosity. And in kind labor can be part of this. Yeah. Okay. The majority of it is labor. Right. Yep. On almost all the projects, that's what it is. It's the labor is so expensive. Mm -hmm. But I was talking, I think I was talking earlier, some of you were asking about how much we were talking about before the meeting started. So I've had to file extensions for this program two or three times now because the timeline has run out that we're supposed to spend the money. Um, they're not giving us any more extensions. So if we don't get this spent by the end of the year, we got to send back what we don't spend. Um, we're, with the proof, if we approve both of these, we'll have $4,200 left. And we have to the end of the year to spend it. Yes. But there are two, two more coming in that I know of, so okay. we're going to have to turn one of them down. With the approval list, there's $4,200 left in that fund. Mm -hmm. so. Which is good. It's a good. It's been a good fund. I think that people yeah, have true. used it. It's really slow to get people to use it, but once people once they understood it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I move the we approve uh, the grant for Alexander Artworks for oh, the amount of two thousand seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. Okay, and that's seconded by Keith. Okay, all those in favor? <coughs> Opposed. Motion carries six zero. And the next one's for Napa? Yeah, the other one, next one's from Napa. Um, Rick's wanting to paint his whole building. Um, Napa has, corporate has changed the colors, <laughs> so there's no more yellow. It's going to be blue and gray now. Um, so they were required to repaint them. Um, so that is for uh, paint, labor, power wash, sign removal, and taping of the windows and stuff like that. So and he's asking for 3000 he has 3000 matching. Like I said, it's going to be more. It's going to be more than <coughs> to get it done. It's about ten thousand dollars to get the paint and building done. So you're probably going to do something similar to what they did with the mural down here. Come in and blast that building to get the old paint off, so the new paint will stick. Yeah, so. I would move that the city council approve the request for Napa. Repainting for funding of up to three thousand dollars from the fifty fifty grant program. Okay. I'll here. second that. Okay. Been moved and seconded to approve the uh, fifty fifty grant request from Napa in the amount up to three thousand. All those in favor? Opposed. Motion carries six zero. I did not, for some reason, get that email, but... It was on, oh, you know what, I forwarded it, I used the old, old one. Okay. Old yeah, I thought, I just glanced through it again to make sure I hadn't missed it, but um, I will I will ask this quest, quite a quick question. The signage, they're not, the new sign is not included in that, is that correct? All of it, so the yellow markers that are on the sides mm -hmm. there, they're getting rid of the yellow. So that yellow signage will go away and the letters on the upper above have to come down in order to paint. Um, that's the removal and then you have to put the Napa part back up but the yellow pieces on the side aren't going back up. Well, their bid is over, you know, over the amount anyway, but I, I know that signage was one thing specifically that the committee did not want to pay for. Well, it's not paying, it's paying it, for the labor to remove it to paint. 
So, okay. So that's that was one of the things that we talked about. So, yep. okay, great. Okay, Utilities Committee recommendation, Johnson Service Company. Okay, so on page 56, in fact, I already ended there, so we can go through it. So we've been working on the Utilities Committee, I and Derek have been working on this for, I don't know, probably over a year now, I would think, pretty close to. Um, and finally, we got a quote back. We had it all separated out as three separate projects, um, but the problem with doing that is that you have mobilization costs with each one of those, which was $8,000 per project. So putting them together, you save $16,000 in mobilization. Um, the West Side Project, um, start from the uh, alley from Maine to Columbia to Wisdom Avenue Street up to West Palm. Um, that, that still remains located in the ditch. When they did the smoke test this last, last year, um, they had smoke coming out of the ditch because there's so many cracks and stuff and not piping in that ditch. Um, we have I and I issues at the sewer lagoons, which were always in close to being in violation with the state because we have so much extra water running into our sewer system from these pipes having cracks and things in them. He said, Derek said also that there's a, a tremendous amount of tree roots in that line. Yep. Um, probably one of our worst ones in town. Yep. And then we have the east side project, which is the Riverbank Lift Station to 2nd and Elm and 8th, Street, 8th through 10th Street. Um, same scenario there. Um, the CIPP, I'll kind of explain what that is. The CIPP stands for Cure in Place Pipe, is what it stands for. Um, is a used in re a rehabilitation method used to repair existing pipelines. It is jointless seamless pipe lined with an existing, that goes inside of an existing pipe. Um, resin within the liner is then exposed to a, current, a heat element, um, either steam or hot water and it makes the liner expand and then it cures in place. So it takes the place of your sewer maintenance there. So it basically lines it. And your description was, I think you ran the highway project together with the east side project here. On no, the uh, no, it's on the back side here. Um, the highway project, that's on the east side of town. Right. Yeah, and I haven't went through that yet. So and you said to 10th Street when you mentioned it earlier. That's what I had Derek give me the locations. I don't think it goes at this. Maybe you said maybe Elm. that Elm? I don't think it goes no, there. I'm wrong. It's Elm, so. Yeah, you're, you ran the high. The Elm ran together. together. You're right. I did. You're right. So, anyways, the east side of town, east side of town, um, that main is located in the middle of the highway. Um, we've looked at moving that to the alley, but you'd be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that, which I don't think that's probably necessary to do. Um, but that one goes from 2nd Elm to 8th through 10th Street. Um, and that's, we have issues down there because of the heavy load that get pulled through there. They smash people's um, lines that have up their house. So that will help with some of this. Later this spring, um, we'll have another that company come back in, or a similar company come back in and give us a bid on lining the homeowner's line to the curb so they don't get smashed in the highway. Um, so we don't have to dig those up and dig up the highway. So we want to get that done. If they do need replaced, before we do the 56 project, chip and seal and resurfacing um, next year. So all in all, the total cost of all three of those projects together is $139,347. So um, and we come out of the sewer fund, there's about um, $600,000 in the sewer fund. I've seen that lining done before. It's pretty neat. It's pretty interesting, yeah. I watched some videos when they did a demonstration. I've seen a demonstration of it done before, too. It's pretty neat stuff. It's like a resin, and they put steam or hot water through it, and it expands, and it just hardens, and it's hard as a rock. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing stuff. They also, if I remember right, indicated that this uh, liner would help with the uh, damage down the road from the heavy trucks going down the road. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we have that old clay tile uh, sewer line that's brittle when it's new. So um, you said it'll cut down on the amount of tree roots that come in to the lines. You said you're still going to have that where the homeowner's line hooks in. But if we realign those, at least over here, 
that'll help over there too. Yeah. So the big thing is the I and I issue. We have when we get large amounts of rain, like this last spring we had that rain for two months, our sewer lagoons down there were over capacity because of all the infiltration into our sewer lines that have cracks and tree roots and stuff in them. One pond is about ready to come out of its banks. Yeah, but this will fix, you know, we asked Derek if this would solve a lot, and he said this will help tremendously get this done with the INI issues so we don't have that problem moving forward um, with the state. And they can handle the big truck. This will yep. handle the big trucks. That's that's a good thing because we sure do have a lot of big trucks coming through. And we're going to get some more manholes relined too. Yep. You know, we've been mm -hmm. working on that for the last couple three years. Yeah, we got we've redone 68 of them, um, and this will do. Uh, what camera? I mean, this will do. It didn't say, um, but it will it will do probably the remaining ones we have. So in those areas. Well, and one thing we did request, we talked, we had met earlier, and I didn't meet with you guys the other day, but we had requested if they did all the all the projects at once, it will save us money. Mm -hmm. About sixteen thousand. Yeah, the, so each one of these would have a mobilization fee of eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So we put them all together and do it as one project, you save sixteen thousand dollars. You only pay one mobilization fee of eight thousand. On, yeah. sorry, but on the other deal with the infiltration mm -hmm. issue. Now, after we fix this, obviously that water is not going to have a place to go. Mm. Or is it? It's in the ditch, so it should just continue on down its drainage ditch. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's where this line is on the west side is is basically in a ditch. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's in and a ditch. so, yep. once we fill the fix the line, the water will just continue on down the ditch like it's supposed instead to. Of instead of sinking into the pipe and going. Yep. Okay. It won't be a problem. Uh, detriment to the areas the places around it it should not be. shouldn't be i mean one of the ditches is pretty big and when it when it ran and this is that issue that we brought up about up on the lakeside drive or, yeah lakeside drive that's that same ditch that runs down through there and at times there's a lot of water coming through there but unfortunately some of us go into our syrup ponds mm -hmm. and that's we can't have that i mean mm -hmm. And this is what we kind of promised our citizens that we would do is start you know, improving our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a big step in that direction. And they've agreed to do that. If we approve all three, they will definitely line it up so we get one mobilization charge. Yeah, that's yeah. what this bid is. So that's the reason you have a total cost. Before, okay. it's just broken out with each one having their own cost plus the mobilization fee on each one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's a total cost, and you can see there's the West Side project has a mobilization fee, none of the other ones do. Okay. Um, the manhole rehabilitation, there is a mobilization fee because that's a different group of people and different equipment okay. um, mm -hmm. to do that. So. Well, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot of work getting. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I agree that it's this is the stuff that's been neglected for years. Absolutely. For that reason, I'll make the motion we approve this project of all three okay. as stated in the packet. There a second. Second. Okay. Any more conversation? Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, utilities. Uh, committee recommendation from Johnson Service Company in the amount of one hundred and thirty nine thousand three hundred and forty seven dollars to come from infrastructure sewer sewer okay from sewer okay all those in favor opposed motion carries six zero okay. Good job, council. Good job. When will they begin that? Do you have any? Oh, um, they're going to start. It's, a lot of it's going to be a 21 project, but they're going to come in and start getting the work this spring before it gets cold, or this fall before it gets cold out. And whatever they don't finish, I have to come back and spring time to finish. Good. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, next, farmers and drovers bid for the CTS lease purchase interest rate. Yes, you guys had me send out requests from the three local banks here to get bids. Farmers and drovers, the only one that came back with the bid. I think we discussed it before but we never you guys didn't vote to accept the bid or not so that's the reason it's on there again um and the, the bid their bid was 15 years at 2.75 percent so any questions comments okay do we have a motion to accept that bid so moved okay second 
been moved and seconded to approve the bid uh, for the CTA's lease purchase program we're working with, uh, with at Farmers and Rovers, 15 years at 2.75%. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. I would say on this too that if, if our savings exceeds what we think it will, we could pay this loan off early too, correct? That's correct, yeah. But uh, so one of the things we're going to have to do, which is good, that we're going to have internal controls, like so I'll be able to look for people's heating and air conditioning on, so we don't have something like what we have in the fire department when they're not there, the air conditioning is on 60 degrees in that room, but that is not necessary. So I'll be able to control it here at the office um, because they give you temps for your energy savings, so we need to make sure we're within that range to make sure we actually save that money. Sure. Otherwise, you're just kind of you're going to be spending more money because right. you're not going to get your energy savings. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Um, we're down to the point where we're ready for committee appointments. Do I have that up here? No, no I, I didn't get all the names. I, I know you're appointing Jason to his committee. Can we give you, maybe not, maybe give you a list. Yes, and I did not bring that with me, but I think I can remember, I hope. You need to go print it off again. Um, yes, it probably would not hurt. I should have brought that with me. The one for uh, Max Byron. Yeah, the, to him. yeah, I'll start with that one. Um, at this time, I'd like to appoint Max Byram to the Sales Tax Grant Committee to uh, serve in the place where Jim Regan has resigned, and I would accept an approval of that appointment. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve Max Byram for the 50-50, not 50-50, for the Sales <laughs> Tax Grant Committee. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries six zero. No, you have these. I've got copies of that. Aren't you rolling? Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't think to bring that with me. No worries. We'll get it. I won't forget that. What's funny is I looked at the pile of papers right there and I thought, no, I don't think I need to do that with me this evening. <laughs> appoint Jason Booker to the Office Committee, the City Economic Development Committee, the 4th of July Committee, the Blighted Structure Committee, and the Comp Plan Committee. You making the chair for the July Committee? You don't have a chair? Um, I don't think we'll do that to him right away. <laughs> <laughs> he was generous enough to come and serve. I'm excited to chair. Comp Plan. Comp Plan. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And don't worry, some of these don't need all, but maybe one, so... <laughs> It sounds like a lot, but just it's once a week. <laughs> once yeah. a week. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Office, city economic development, which we would meet one morning a month, uh, usually from 7 30 to 8 30. Okay. Um, the July 4th committee, the Blighted Structure Committee, and the Comp Plan Committee. And so I'd like to appoint that, and I would appreciate an approval of those appointments. So move. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. We moved and seconded to approve the appointments of Jason to the City Council Committee assignments. All those in favor? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All those opposed. <laughs> okay, motion carries six zero. Thank you. I think his would be an abstention, Mayor. I don't think he can vote for himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought we used to, but uh, that's been a while. Yeah. Since okay, then. Okay. Very good. Okay, adoption of the Uniform Public Offense Code. Sir, you're up. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. The, uh, just a bit of introduction, and for the past members that have been around for a while, probably this is uh, something you already know, but I'll take just a moment to explain it. In uh, Kansas, uh, the Kansas League of Municipalities publishes a model code for public offenses and a separate model code for traffic offenses. Uh, you don't have to accept their proposal. You can adopt by ordinance your own rules. But the beauty of the model rules is it's pretty much the same across the state with every state. And so it gives a, a certain uniformity to it. In addition, uh, the league's already done the work for you. Now, they, this is done annually, and there are usually very minor changes, if any. Um, and uh, but this year, uh, their proposed uh, pretty much tracks the past years. What you've done in the past on the model ordinance relating to traffic, there are specific prohibitions in the model ordinance against ATVs on public streets. In the past, you have chosen to eliminate that, not completely. And I'll be honest with you, I can't tell you the precise differences in, 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 the, in the way that you've done it or not. But I, if this is tailored after the past. And you've allowed the use of ATVs, which deviates from the, the, the standard traffic uh, code. Likewise, the public offense code which doesn't deal with traffic, but deals with, you know, things like um, domestic batteries and, and assaults, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, the only exception that you've done in the past is in Section 10, uh, dealing with barbed wire fences. There was a prohibition that using putting up any barbed wire fence in the city. The past councils have said we, we don't have a problem with that in the appropriate, proper place and have exempted that provision. And that's what this does basically, is just adopt the same thing you've done before. Put in place these two uh, model codes, one dealing with traffic, one dealing with public offenses. Uh, so they're proposed to you as ordinance numbers 2243 and 2244. Uh, 43 deals with traffic and 44 deals with public offenses. Okay. Do we hear any conversation or questions? Pretty standard what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly the same thing done in the past. It's enforced through the municipal court system. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion. Oh, okay. Who was it? One of them is Jason and one of them is Keith. Who was first? I think they were at the same time, so. Who, who go, with, who go with Keith. Yeah, he, we'll do Jason second. Is that okay, Jason? Okay. So all those in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Randy. Okay, any other things that you need to tell us? We're all good? <laughs> yeah, you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on then, let's go to governing body comments and we'll start, let's start with Nick. I actually don't have any. Okay. So, I have to update on the 177 project and then we are working on stuff with the Utilities Committee and um, you guys go by the Riverwalk or by the Call Mission, we had some pine trees that had gotten bagworms along with that parking lot there and the city crews have removed those today. So it was a lot better over there. It cleaned it up quite a bit. Yeah, so that, that little end of the river walk had kind of got neglected and 
Yeah, it looks 10,000 times better. Yeah. And I guess uh, Rodney was telling Mark that we used to actually mow that area down through there before all those trees and brush and everything grew up in there. So they cleaned all that out today. And that looks Good. kind of like a different place over there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Plus, part of the hill would wash out onto the parking lot, too. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. That, that's so what the, the plan is to get it all cleaned up and sprayed, and then they're going to bring in dirt because they have dirt that's under washing under that sidewalk. And then hopefully seed it this fall so it's grass. Good. That would be nice. Okay, right, Jason. I don't have anything. Not burner? Nothing tonight. Mr. Keith? <laughs> I don't have anything other than I I saw a county by county listing and I think per capita I think Morris County's done a fantastic job containing the COVID virus that, which speaks well of, of our health officials and our community in general. So I think I think everybody's done a great job. Great. That's awesome. Okay, uh, Mark Brooks. Uh, recently, we had a Santa Fe Trail 2 underneath, but before that, the Historic Sites Committee met about some artifacts that the commission is going to donate, and we had to decide whether we wanted to come before the council and decide to ask if the city would take them. There are two artifacts on the lawn of the commission. One is a, grind, a large grinding stone that came from Saunders Mill over here on the east side of town, and we have the engine for it already in Durland Park. And so that's one artifact. The other is a, a large school bell that uh, came originally from Four Mile. Uh, originally, we, I thought about giving it to the Morris County Historical Society, but the committee met and we discussed it. Uh, Morris County Historical Society does not have a schoolhouse, and we do. When I say we, the city of Council Grove has one over here in Cram Park or Council Oak Park. And so what we want to ask is if the council will accept these donations uh, and the city crews move them to the proper locations when the times come for that. So one, the grinding stone and the, and the school bell. And where would you suggest we put the grinding stone? Did you right, have right next to the, the the engine, or close to the engine in Durland Park. In Durland. Oh, that steam engine over there. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and that was the engine that came out of Saunders Mill, mm -hmm. and this is the grinding stone that somehow ended up in the grounds of the call mission, and it just doesn't fit what what we're uh, going to with our theme, and uh, like I say, the school bell. Uh, again, what my whole my intentions were with, to give it to the Morris County Historical Society, but we thought it was a better fit to go with the that's called the Fair Fairview Schoolhouse, and we thought it would be nice to have that outside the schoolhouse where visitors could see the bell and so forth. So, but but the council has to accept these. I can't just drop them off in your. <laughs> <laughs> And then there will be, at, at some point, they need to have some bases and some things constructed with them, but uh, that's kind of down the line. Yeah. Uh, the, the engine in, um, in the Durham Park actually needs some work on it anyway. That, that needs to have a concrete platform done, and I know that's on the city list. Of that was probably before you came on board when we started talking about that. First I've ever heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. The the timbers are rotting underneath one of those wheels and it, it was sitting like this for a while. We were concerned uh, school children climb on it and we were concerned that somebody could get really mm -hmm. this thing weighs when I say a ton, it probably weighs three or four tons. Mm -hmm. Um and so the city crews were able to get something out of there and put another beam out of there, but that's to me, that's just a short-term fix, and we need to get something more permanent. Um, and we talked about Hartman's crews pouring some sort of a pad, put it on, and maybe at the same time, mm -hmm. something can be constructed to put this grinding stone on too. So, okay. if the council chooses to accept it. Okay. You want a conversation? Do we have any place to store it? Until we get 
things done. You usually gotta leave them over there until. Well, we may try to get them off the lawn. If you guys were to, let's say, if you guys were to accept them, I might ask the city crews to move them maybe onto the parking lot so that we can get our lawn reseeded this fall, preparing for the museum opening in the, in the spring. They're actually on some pedestals over there. Yeah, they are on some maybe concrete this pedestals. Whole thing could be moved. Could be. Um, yeah. Tim and his guys will get them over, just like how we Maybe temporarily move them to the concrete parking lot, and then whenever we can get everything worked out, then they can be moved to. Because there's some paperwork too. Unfortunately, working with the state, it's not just as simple as all right, you guys can have it, and you thanks and go on your way. There's some there's some deaccessioning that has to happen, and so it may take a little bit on that anyway. But the main thing I just wanted to see if you guys are interested in it. Are we interested? I mean, there's going to be a little bit of labor involved, but okay. maybe, maybe a little concrete too. Do I hear a motion? I would make that motion. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Moved and second uh, to. Except the grinding stone in the school bell from the Cobb Mission's grounds, the state, I believe. <laughs> so, all those in favor? I will abstain. Opposed? Okay, so <coughs> five and one half. And one Shame. quick other thing, Mayor. Um, I'm going to call a meeting for the Historic Sites Committee. Uh, we have these signs through town that mark the route of the Santa Fe Trail, and they're in horrible condition. Um, with what's, what's on the horizon, I think we need to look at that. And I'd like to take it to committee to maybe redesign them and come up with something that we can put along the trail to redesign it. Since uh, we can't seem to come to an agreement to change the name of Main Street to Santa Fe Trail, we'll just go with that for now. So, and that's all I have, Mayor. Are they, um, those signs aren't supposed to be the signs from state or in no, these are ones I think the city of Counts Grove has put up over the years and some of them are so faded you can't even read them and I think it's an embarrassment to have them up and have people come to our our city and see that so the same thing with the lawn on the end of as you go across this bridge over here toward the west west right west there's a sign there that says um, Radar. That radar sign, that sign needs to yeah. go. It, it's terrible. It just needs to probably be taken down. If you guys agree, I mean, no, I agree it either needs to be replaced or, or replaced since they yeah. are using radar. Yeah, it needs yeah. to be replaced. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think there we're, needs to sorry, be this. Sorry, talking about <laughs> on the west side of town. There were out there just past the uh, Sunset Drive. Oh, I'm talking about the one by the water plant. You think there's one more water plant? Yeah, Mayor's so talking about it. just on the other water end of the bridge, on the on the water plant bridge. Yep. You can't hardly read it. It's yep. so faded out. Yeah, they wrote all four entries into the city. It's <laughs> yeah. so faded you never noticed it. Yeah. 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 At the and time. still enforce it. So well, not I that. would say that he replaced it's not for a minute. We'll have Jeff look at the radar signs and then we can look at it. At the same time, that might. I don't know if you can do this legally or not. You might be able to tell us, but we might go ahead and put that this is a hands-free community too. Yeah, we talked about doing that in a previous meeting. You know, so we could say we can just have one sign instead of radar. Let me put that up. I was hoping that we could bring up the phones again and do it with that ordinance. But... Well, we could put masks needed too. <laughs> That was a joke. <laughs> I'm smiling, see? <laughs> but I, on, on a, I, I don't think it would hurt if we would do a sign inventory in the community and and mark down what needs to be replaced, you know? Um, Didn't the private committee, Mayor? We've talked about that, and uh, we it's just something we have not done. We have talked about it. We're just talking about street signs, not... Yeah, we were just talking about street signs, yeah, not Which those need to be signs. addressed, too. Um, yeah, but they're looking really it's bad. A timely pro it's a time-consuming project, and we're all volunteers. All right. I just wonder if our city crews could carry some sort of a, a pad or something in their truck, and if they 
C1 make a notation and then we can maybe at least start gathering up. Part of one of these cool that would be a good mm -hmm. thing to have them go mm -hmm. Google. That's what you're doing inventory. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have all of them go do it. I just probably pick a couple and that's what they're responsible for if you don't think you want them all out doing that. We still have some money in our budget, but I'd rather not the committee use that money for those particular signs because we still have some historic sites that we want to get signs for, but we can talk about it in the committee. And uh, but that particular sign definitely needs to be replaced. So okay. that's all I have there. Okay. There. Uh, my only question this evening for the council is where we are at on recurring the automatic entry button on the front. Jeff Barbo has is it, was supposed to have ordered one. I meant to ask him Monday about that. And I forgot to. So, but it's been talked about and should be ordered. Okay. Sharon? Um, at the last uh, Flint Hills Regional Council, uh, one of the things that was discussed was uh, the whole open and safe issues in all of the cities. And the city of Manhattan had already kind of set up a, a program of, of, of uh, and they, instead of saying Manhattan, they call it Flint Hills Safe and Open. Uh, they offered, of course, to all the cities and everything in the Flint Hills Regional Council. Um, when, it, when, we first, uh, when I first saw it, I talked to Diane about it, and we have already in town created some signs of, about masks and so on that have been posted around, sign, around town. And we thought, well, this is kind of a duplicate because there are signs and things available. But a part of this whole process is a just a, a signing a pledge, and businesses can do it, and individuals can do it. And the positive thing about it is they'll be listed on it on, on websites that people who are saying, my business is safe and open. And so I guess what I, I just wanted the council to know about it, uh, and and maybe uh, if if, the, if it's agreeable. Um, or Nick could send out the website, the, the, the link to it. But also, uh, and, and then we'll go back through the chamber and let them pass out that to do. So again, we weren't suggesting that we buy an open, whole other set of songs, but I think I wanted you to be aware of it, and then the- Do you want me to forward the email you sent to the council? Uh-huh, okay. that's the one that I, I did forward it to, to you. Um, I just think it's something that it's a good thing to look at, and if we sign up as individuals, but businesses particularly, because again, it gets promoted out there. It's a, it's a wider range. It's one of the benefits of being part of a regional council. So um, anyway, I wanted to just explain it a little bit, and then if, if you all, I, I can't, I can't <coughs> send that forward it to the rest of the, uh, the council, but yeah, I that was okay. Um, so that you There's no liability with the city involved in a situation like this? promoting these signs for businesses that say they are safe and if you should spend up. Well, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Speaking you out. know, I, I, I guess it's not something I've really thought about. I've just got the processing periods that's being discussed. But um, I suppose it depends exactly on how much the city helps the advertising in response to that. It uses the city as Impromptuer, you know, was vouching for this. Because obviously somebody could, somebody could uh, sign up the thing and not be doing anything. You know, it's just you get the yeah, that's true. advantage if there is a bad thing on the website. So I guess the only caution I have is the city be careful about somehow certifying that these. That's a good point. Well, no. I, I guess I was just trying to think about, I guess another way is through the chamber, just letting, I, I was just trying to figure out how to get that information past my knowledge mm -hmm. <laughs> as being sure. the regional if, council. If Diane wants to handle it, I mean, that's kind yeah. of the function of the chamber, okay. I mean, is to, that's why you could That way we're not really endorsing it, we're yeah, just. I think it probably okay. needs to go through the chamber and then it's not the city. I'll, I'll, the, I'll turn it back that way, um, but, but anyway, I'll. I'm just letting you know that that's an opportunity out there. Would you go ahead and send it anyway? Yeah, I will send you guys. Like yeah, so yeah. Then yeah. you can see the website. I think it's important for you to read it. And it's yeah. really, yeah. it lays it out pretty clearly. Sure. And it's just what we're all trying to do is figure out a way to be safe and open. And, and it's just the same reminders we put. So. Be sure that, be sure that Bill gets it to me. Bill, anything else in the channel? 
That's all I have. Okay. Thanks. Bill, you have anything else? I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I have two quick things. One, um, Megan sent the thing out on the conference yesterday that they had some of the topics on the conference. Um, I didn't think that the conference looked like it was real. <laughs> Great. Lot, lot, I'm going to be honest. Of the office members that have been here, a lot of that's really new stuff. It's, uh, not, it's not. It's just. It's not new information. Uh -uh. Um, I looked at it and I thought we've already done all of this. Right. In the middle of the week. I don't know what you've done. I've read it and it didn't impress people. I know. I, I, well, the funny part is you read through it and you look at it and you look at it the past two or three years and some of it's just rebadged information that you've already been given. Uh -huh. The one about COVID, of course, is a little bit different. Yeah, but we've all heard all the stuff they've already said about COVID. It's pretty common with the jurisdiction of their county and health official. Right. So yeah. far as that goes. So yeah. nothing that they would say about that. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I wasn't overly as I was. That, no, have I you mean, already signed this up, Megan? Uh, I have already signed everyone up. I believe the cutoff date to pull out of it is like September 6th or something like that. So okay. it's coming up super quick. So if okay. anybody wants to back out. What's the fee for this? The fee is, hang on, I got okay. okay. I was going to say, it is recordable. I mean, you know, you can go back to it. Anytime during the year. And pull it back yeah, so I'm wondering if just one of us ought to sign up just to get the information and go forward. I'm not trying to diss the, the league or anything. It's just that they're just. Uh, I'll be honest, they have probably more from going to the expo stuff than I did by sitting in some of those. Especially this year with the not, they say they're gonna have round tables, but they have no yeah, conversation as to what they're gonna Normally the in-person conference is really good. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I think so good, too. Good stuff, that's mm -hmm. what I've heard from yeah. 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 before. Mm -hmm. They might be, they might have been better just waiting <laughs> until we could, <laughs> could do something. It's 119 per person. 119 per person. So. If you don't want to do it. That's a pretty good chunk of change when you count all the councilmen. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, after reading the itinerary on that, I am not impressed and I would prefer to be dropped out. Why don't we get one? Let's have one person do it. Let's just sign up. And then one. that way we can. Like Any chance you're the new guy? <laughs> You just did not know what you were getting. It is stuff that you have not heard before. Right. So would that would everybody be agreeable? To that? If somebody still wants to do it, and I don't want to talk you out of it whatsoever. Well, he, I, I'm the one. He's, he didn't talk himself into it. <laughs> jokingly. <laughs> jokingly. So. Well, I think as a new councilman, maybe these two might be, might be the, the two that maybe should do. I just, I just wonder what it's going to look like with it being online. Yeah, I don't know. You know. I do too. I wonder if it's just going to be a long, drawn out. I yeah. mean, the conference yeah. is a hurry, hurry, hurry thing. I mean, uh -huh. you're, We're busy. You're, yeah, you're, you're in this room for just so long and then you're up. Trying to get to another one quickly. Only one day. Mm -hmm. This one you're going to have the option of just kind of taking your time to read this it. This one's three days. 13th. 13th through 16th. 13th through 16th. Yeah. Yeah. That probably takes in, uh, in consideration. The first day is the is the attorneys, and then there's mm -hmm. you know oh, we yes. usually don't right. go until the last also. day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Bill, I mean, you be sure and if you're wanting to do it, do it. You know the. <laughs> In that one, Randy would only go on that one day. Yeah, yeah Randy didn't go the rest of the days usually. So, well, so if you want to, if you want to leave me on it, I'll, I'll take my time and look through it. That's fine. I, I, I will, I will accept the responsibility also yes, since yeah. I'm one of the new yeah. council members. I, yes. I do think it'd be See, I didn't even think about that, Larry, to say that to you because mm -hmm. you worked for the city. I don't yeah, think you there was a gap between <laughs> some of them. You've heard us discuss all of it sometime one or the other, probably. Oh, okay. that, yeah. So, so Sharon Horn, Mark Brooks, and Debbie are taking off, right? Right. Thank you. Okay. I, I, so, so far it's just... Jason. Unless they're sending us the sandwiches and cookies through the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. 
I haven't done a virtual happy I'm hour before. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go buy your own stuff. Yeah. And they're not that good. So. <laughs> well, I'll, probably, I'll probably do that today for you tonight. Thank you. Done. Now. I've only been in a couple more. The food's been good. Normally it's... For sure, I went. The food was pretty good. We had that set down. Yes. And that food was pretty yeah, good. Well, I remember Jack Stack when they did Jack Stack. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, last year we went and there was like box sandwiches with no meat and then a cookie. Yeah. Were any of you on uh, the uh, council when we went to Overland Park and then we got on the charter buses, went out to the park, and they had food on the the pass? That was their like. That was their hundred. I believe it was our hundredth anniversary of the uh, uh, you know, League of Municipalities, and they brought in Doris uh, Curran. You said you said this. Doris Curran, good, good one, good one. Yeah. And they had unbelievable meal. I mean, out, out in the lobby, they were fixing uh, Banana Foster and Cherry Jubilee, and I mean, they really went out that year, and then the. On yours. It blew blew the whole budget. P -P As a rule, the Overland Park ones are a little bit better. Yeah, I believe so. so. Yeah. Okay, well, we we've taken care of that. Then the other thing I'm asking is, and um, the MFA is are they the ones cleaning up behind, or is that our crew cleaning up MFA? across from Saddle yeah. Rock and all back there? MFA, the land they own yet the. So some of the land back there, the city is cleaning up. You guys approved that for blood structure. So we did some of that, but MFA also volunteered to clean up the trees. I think that's the seventh street right there across from the school where the lawn baby used to be. Mm -hmm. um, they cleaned up that whole area down there because it was a mess. They cleaned out the trees and that parking lot and everything back there. So MFA did do that, but it was on the property. Um, and then the city with the blood structure stuff completed up, cleaned up that property behind it. Okay, so this is directly across where people park at Saddle Rock. Or are we talking about? Pretty much farther yeah. to the east. No, this is, but yeah, he had stuff over there. Um, he had old cars and all kinds of junk. It wasn't his property. He had taken stuff from his property, moved it over to this wooded area, and we ended up claiming it all. Which is not the Saddle Rock parking area. Okay, do, who owns the Saddle Rock parking area? Uh, Fred uh, Miller. Fred Miller did. Okay, but no, he's, does he still? He still owns that old building there. I know that. That's right there. Well, Fred passed away, didn't he? No, no. Mm -hmm. no. no. He's he's oh, okay, all right, sorry. Yeah, he was in here. Yeah, I seen him maybe a month ago. He's okay. So yeah, Fred owns that part where people park for Saddle Rock. Some, yes. Well, some of it's Fred and some of it's the gas company, isn't it? Well, part of it is the Katy land that the city owns. Yeah. See, everything that belonged to the Katy Railroad. Mm -hmm. Was needed to the city, so we have. Okay, so when, yes, so I thought we gave that back. from Missouri Pacific. No, no, no. Mopac went to the rails to trails, but the Katy all went to the city, all the way out past the uh, Heartlands and all, right. all the way out north. Everything within the city limits was deeded to the city of Council. So then, that parking that's just right along that street is ours. Then is that what you're saying? Because mm -hmm. that's where the Katy Railroad is. There are still some yeah, well, ties there. Well, it's over. See, Sixth Street is not where it was plotted to be. Plotted to be. Right. If you look at it, because Fred Miller, once upon a time, uh, many years ago, tried to sell the city. The street. The street, yes. <laughs> for about 10,000. I remember. Well, I don't know. For a certain amount of money. <laughs> but um, that didn't go over well. But yes, the street is not where it's plotted. But yes, Fred owns ground down there around those buildings and then his land that joins MFA mm -hmm. but there is some Katy land through there that the city owns. It's very confusing. It, well my the reason I'm asking that there are some craters over there. I mean they're getting bigger all the time. You're talking about the parking lot? Yeah and I'm concerned that if any of that is our land that somebody's going to damage their That's not vehicle and cause problems. It's kind of over there by where the big gas tanks are and stuff like that. Well it's on the back. It's yeah, on the back of that, that tree back there. On the other side of the tree. Yeah you can lose your car there. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that's not city property that we should be maintaining. I don't think that's city property. Because you could bought them out. That before when I've been over there at Saddle Rock, mm -hmm. that's horrible about it. He said that's not city property. Okay, good. Yeah. Can Do we you, get a map? Can can I have try. James look at it? Yeah, I have James look at the map of that area. I'd like see, I'd like to see that. Yeah, that is because that is the beginning of the trail, and it is an absolute disaster. 
I mean, we could put a swimming pool in there, another couple of swimming pools in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty deep. Yeah, you can do a fishing pond. Into the trail spa. So, anyway, that, I just wanted to bring that up because it does get pretty bad over there. And with the ice, it's getting worse all the time. And this is the worst I've ever it's seen. Bad. It's, it's been like that since I've been here. Mm -hmm. What kind of liability would the city have if we dropped a grader in there and, and leveled that all out and it wasn't on our property? Well, I don't know that you'd have any if you're actually making it safe. Unless you hit a underground utility or something that you don't know that's there. Or you could have a can well, dig. You could yeah. do a can dig. Yeah. Then you start doing stuff like that. The only thing I, I think it would be great to do that, but then everybody, other people start collecting stuff mm -hmm. from town because then they know you'll come fix it. Yeah. Well, I think mm -hmm. the city has some obligation to assist. You know, we're a small community, and, and just like what we talked years ago where Colby got together and the city and the, the school and everybody kind of working together to try to help each other out. So I think that's some, there's a little bit of trying to help each other if we can. Yeah, I think let's see who owns it and see if we can talk yeah. to them about mm -hmm. taking care of it. Um, just explain to them the safety concern. I'm sure there's some ordinance or something that can apply to that. Or whatever, I would imagine. It's, it's just a parking lot. Yeah. If it's private property, there's nothing. The city can do it. Fix it, fix it. Ourselves. But you can volunteer to fetch that no cost to them by yeah. the property owner on private property. Mm -hmm. He is not required, they are not required to provide parking for other businesses around right. on their land. Right. Correct. Sure. So, no. Yeah. Well, it's a blighted parking lot. It is a blighted parking yeah. lot. It is. Yeah. 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 It's kind of surprising yeah. that nobody from yeah, none of the patrons from Saddle, Saddle Rock, Rock have gotten their skid steers together. To yeah, I'm surprised to all the guys that go yeah, there. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I just felt that it was something that it's at the trailhead. There's a lot of visitors that go there. I'm worried somebody's going to get. Yeah, they're going to run their car. Then. So, okay, let's let's just kind of check it out and see where we're at. Thank you. That was an interesting conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that whole area over there is confusing. Yeah, it is. So, okay, well, uh, does anybody have anything else? Then I would uh, appreciate a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, second. Second. Okay, do the second to adjourn. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carries 6-0. Thank you all.